Hi, everybody. I'm Lee Howard Stevens. You may know of me as the author of Method of Movement for Marimba, but I also happen to be the founder and the CEO of Mallet Tech. And I'm here today at Sweetwater to show you a number of the features on our instruments and mallets. We're going to start out with information on the Imperial Grand Marimba. And many of the features that are on the Imperial Grand are also found on the MJB marimba, the Roadster, and our stiletto. Many people ask me, why do I have such wide bars in the low register of the Imperial Grand and the Roadster marimba? Why do we use round tubes when everybody else these days is using flared tubes, ovals, uh, all sorts of different shapes? And it really comes back to the basics of acoustics. When you're hot, do you fan yourself with one finger? I don't think so. Do you fan yourself with three fingers? No. You fan yourself with your whole hand or you get something to move even more air. If I make a bar, any bar, let's say a three inch wide bar, one inch longer, I've added just three square inches of surface area to move the air into the resonator. If I take a 20, same 20 inch bar and I add a half inch in width, I've now added 10 square inches of surface area. Big speaker, little speaker. So our wide bars balance things so that when I play chords that are spaced out low register and high register, the bass has the same dynamic ability, volume ability, as the mid and the upper register. Now, don't confuse breadth of tone with projection in an auditorium. Many instruments sound great in a small room because they have tons of overtones, a wash of overtones. And in a small room, they feel like you've got a lot of bass. But in fact, those shapes, and that would be flares and ovals and uh, rectangular shapes that come out to a triangle on the bottom, they have hundreds, literally hundreds, of overtones. We at Malatech, the Malatech way is only round tubes. Even our near professional instruments, the M-Tech series, have round tubes on them. Many people ask, why round tubes? Round tubes have natural harmonic series, just like a string on a piano or a bass fiddle or a cello, just like a flute. And you can hear, if you blow into a round tube, you can hear what sounds almost like a chord. Now, if you blow into a tube that's in a different shape, the less expensive shapes that are made, the flares and so forth, and ovals, you can hardly even get a fundamental sound. But just listen to this. We're never going to have an oval tube. We're never going to have a flared tube. Because a round tube has the natural harmonic series, just like a string, instrument, a bass fiddle, a cello, a violin, just like uh, any of the woodwind instruments, a flute. There's natural harmonic series when it's a perfectly symmetrical round shape like that. As a result, what happens is in the low register, if you have the proper coupling of a wide bar that moves a lot of air and a round tube that has natural harmonic series, the natural harmonic series only picks up the good harmonic sounds of the bar, amplifies them, whereas the other shapes are amplifying lots of other overtones, and actually they're not very loud in a big hole. Those other shapes, not the round shapes that we use on Malatech, are very inconsistent in volume. As you play down the scale chromatically, you will note on almost every instrument of that sort of design that there's inconsistent volume note to note. Some notes sound great and they sound strong, and then the very next note for some reason might be weak. You can measure these, you don't have to measure them, you can hear them with your ear, but you can measure them with a dB meter, a decibel meter, and actually see the fall off of sound. And we'll demonstrate a little bit later how when you play down on a Malatek, each note has the same power. Most importantly, the low range with round tubes has the same character of sound as the mid range and the upper range. If you have a whole different style of tubing in the low range in order to save money, when you play down, the character of the instrument changes dramatically in that low register, and that's just not the Malatech way. So let me just play down chromatically, and I think you'll hear that the character of the sound stays the same. When 
when I play Bach and I have chords that are spread out throughout the keyboard, this is the only instrument and the roadster where I feel like the bottom notes support the upper notes with enough volume. And that's because we're using three and a quarter inch wide bars over a four inch diameter tube. Many people ask me why Malatech instruments have tunable resonators. This Imperial Grand comes with tunable resonators on all five octaves. Other models that we have have just the bottom few octaves tunable, but you can always exercise an option to get the whole instrument tunable. Do you really need tunable resonators? Well, if you're not fussy about the tone, and if you always play at about 70 degrees, then you probably don't need tunable resonators. But I found in my career that I play at all different temperatures all over the world. Sometimes the halls are freezing, sometimes the halls are blistering hot, the lights, the stage lights heat up the room. Here's what's happening. In heat, the bars go a little bit flat, but that's not really the problem. The problem is that the speed of sound is proportional to temperature, and the tubes go very sharp very, very quickly. So in heat, bars are going flat, tubes are going sharp, the two things no longer resonate together, and you lose volume, you lose ring time, you lose just the body and the beautiful tone of the marimba. Most marimbas, especially five octave marimbas, eventually sag in the middle. Gravity takes its toll, no matter how strong the rails are originally, they sag. And they sag for a couple of different reasons. One is the resonators sag because they're, sus they're suspended that end and that end. And it's just, it's nine feet and it's just too heavy, uh, even on an aluminum instrument, let alone a brass instrument. So about 20 years ago, or close to 30 years ago, I think Malatech invented a new way of suspending the resonators. We have what we now call antlers. Each of the resonators goes in separately so that this bank of sharp tubes is actually in three sections, one, two, three. And so you can set up the marimba, whatever set of resonators you happen to grab, you can put in to the frame, put this one in, and then the, one of the naturals and over here. So the resonators are supported on the end, just like everybody else's instrument, on the end, just like everybody else's instrument, but also at two places in the middle. And there's nothing to tighten or loosen. They just drop in with gravity. The ends are covered with rubber, so they're silent, and they just stay there. And it, it makes it possible for one person to set up the instrument. Also, our dovetails that are on the ends of the instrument separate the bar rail from the frame. As you probably know, if you're a marimba player, most instruments have the bar rail sit on a metal bracket, and that metal bracket transfers energy into the frame. And the other way of doing it is that the bar rail actually has a cutout in the end board, and the bar rail sits inside the frame. And both of those tend to transfer energy from playing, particularly on the ends of the sharps, into the instrument, and oftentimes actually makes the resonators shake and make noise. I'm going to play on the ends of the sharps, and I'm really slamming them. There's absolutely no sound getting into the resonators, because here, 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 and the four places down there, the bar rail actually is not touching the end board. It's sliding down on a rubber dovetail. And that also makes it possible for one person to set up the instrument by themselves. Almost everything on a Malatech marimba is user adjustable and user tightenable. One of the features that we will never change is we assemble the resonators with stainless steel button head cap screws, they're called, that's the technical name, and a stainless steel nylock locking nut. Why is that important? Well, it's important because almost the whole industry has moved to rivets. It used to be that rivets were just used on inexpensive instruments, but now they're used on almost all marimbas. And when you travel with a marimba and the tubes flex a little bit, they loosen up those rivets. And we all know as percussionists what rivets are good for in a drum set, but it's totally inappropriate on a marimba to have the resonators rattle. So the other way that people uh, deal with this is they weld it. But again, it's metal on metal. Any metal on metal 
on a Malatech is user tightenable. You get tools with the instrument, and if anything should ever start to rattle some time down the road, you can use the tools to tighten it down. So each of our resonators are attached to the resonator rails with stainless steel hardware that is user adjustable. Also user adjustable, the distance between rails two and three, there's a bracket in there that you can change the overlap of the sharps onto the naturals and brace the instrument. Also user adjustable, there are nodal braces here that adjust the distance between the rails and brace the rails four and three and also two and one. So that 20 years from now, if there's ever any warpage in the wood, you can correct it. Everything on a Malatech is user tightenable, user adjustable, it's just the Malatech way. You may have noticed that Malatech resonators go straight up. There are no extra arches. There's no wasted tubing. When you see an extra arch on the high end of a marimba or a vibraphone, the tubing that's below the plug is just extra weight. It has no acoustic function whatsoever. In the high end of the instrument, the plug in the tube is an inch or two below the bar. Everything below that is wasted and just for show. We call them falsies. At Malatech, you just get functional resonators that are the length that they need to be. You don't have to carry extra weight. You don't have to have extra room in your car to carry around resonators that are non-functional. Another aspect of sagging is that the bar rails tend to sag in the middle over a nine foot marimba. We have several things that we've developed to combat that. Number one, inside the hinged area, there are rail levelers. And by just using an Allen key, you can bring it back up to perfectly level as the years go by. Secondarily, we've developed what we call a million dollar hinge. Uh, it really didn't cost a million dollars, but it felt that way. We went through many, many prototypes. And that hinge is locked in that direction and it doesn't enable any twisting. And it's all hidden inside the rail. This being a 15 or 17 year old marimba has our old hinges. On the front here, you don't see them, but if you were on this side of the instrument, you would see uh, custom hinges that we made ourselves, but not our new million dollar hinge. But that million dollar hinge is as rigid as you possibly could make. It's only useful on a marimba. It's not an off the shelf kind of stock hinge that most companies use for marimba rails. Malatech has a very special height adjustment system that we've developed over the years. And one of the things about it is that you don't see it because all the mechanism is hidden inside the central tube. So on the Malatech system, all you need to do is crank it up or crank it down, nothing to loosen, nothing to tighten, nothing to lock, nothing to unlock. It's very secure, very stable, and it's all hidden mechanism, so the instrument looks great up or down. In fact, even if you're short like me, you want, might want to crank it up and crank it back down again just for fun. Thanks so much for watching all this information about the Malatech Imperial Grand Marimba. If you have any further questions about this instrument or any other Malatech product, please reach out to your Sweetwater sales engineer or go to sweetwater.com. Thank you.